Welcome to Kitsap County. This week we're going to cover the seven costs buyers may need when buying a home. I'm Stephanie Dupuy with Dupuy Team at Keller Williams West Sound in Silverdale, Washington. So, you're a home buyer, it might be your first time buying a home, or maybe you haven't bought a home in a while, and you know, whether you're buying a home yourself, or maybe you have a friend who's buying a home, and you're thinking of buying a home, and you're watching your friend go through the process, it seems like the expenses involved with buying a home are not as straightforward as you would have thought. Most people have heard of, obviously, you're going to need down payment for most loans and closing costs, but there are clearly some other expenses. So today what we're going to do is we're going to outline the possible expenses you need and explain each of them just a little bit. Okay, so expense number one that you're probably going to need cash for is your down payment. Obviously, not everybody's going to need this because there are some zero down loan programs. VA is the most, VA loan is the most obvious, okay? So plan for your down payment, speak with your lender about this to find out how much of a down payment you specifically will need. The second expense that you might need uh, cash for is your earnest money deposit. And the earnest money deposit is one of the expenses that most often throws buyers off. They don't expect this one. And what the earnest money deposit is, is it's a good faith deposit. And it's exactly what it says. It's a deposit, okay? So, we're gonna go into detail on this one a little bit. What this means is, when you make your offer to a buyer, you're gonna put a certain amount of money uh, forward uh, in good faith, okay? What you're saying to them is, I'm serious about making my offer. And that money does not go to the seller. It goes into escrow. It goes to a third party where it's held safely throughout the transaction until closing. And then at closing, it gets dispersed back to someplace else that the buyer needs. For example, it often goes to closing costs or it might go towards your down payment Okay, so as long as you meet the contract terms as a buyer, your earnest money is safe and will be redirected towards another expense that you need uh, related to your transaction. That's earnest money in a nutshell, and obviously there's more to it than that that we won't cover in this video. However, that's what it is. The intent of the earnest money, again, is to show the seriousness of your offer. So the more earnest money, the better. A common question is how much earnest money should I provide? It really varies. You need to talk to your agent and broker about this, okay? A common amount is one to three percent. Think of it as an engagement ring, okay? If you're, if you're serious with somebody and you're going to propose to them, don't show up with a bubble gum ring you got out of a, you know, a carnival toy thing, slot machine. You, you did, you hear what I'm saying? You don't show up with a 25 cent ring. You're going to show up with a, a the, the nicest ring you can afford. You're going to show up with something that just kind of is shiny and dazzles and sparkles. And that's how you want to think of your earnest money. Earnest money shows your financial stability, it shows your seriousness. Um, and the thing with earnest money is if you do need to terminate the transaction, as long as you follow the contract rules, you're going to get your earnest money back. You don't get your earnest money back when you break the contract. And you can get details about that from your broker. Okay, let's go to the third thing you may need cash for. And that is your home inspection. We always recommend a home inspection. You know, uh, and this is a general inspection for your home that you go to purchase, okay? You're always gonna need cash for that. Uh, how much cash you need depends on the size of the home, the inspector, okay? So we're not gonna give a, an amount here, but uh, 
you're going to need cash for that. All right. So that is not something that you pay later in the transaction or that you can go into your loan. The fourth thing that you're going to need cash for varies from house to house. You're going to need cash for either a septic scope, okay, or a sewer scope. Oftentimes you're going to want to scope the sewer line. If you don't have sewer, you're going to want to scope the septic, even if it's a new septic in my opinion. And every septic is different. So some septics, you know, the septic uh, inspector is going to recommend not scoping it, but instead to do a pressure test. But those inspections can be fairly expensive. And here's the thing. Um, in our area, those haven't been too popular to do. We've seen a lot of uh, transactions where those aren't conducted on the buyer side. Uh, we always recommend them to our buyers. The last thing you want to do is move into a home, find out the sewer line is cracked and broken and that you're replacing the sewer line or that the septic has failed. Um, so get those items inspected, get them scoped. And, and the county inspection on a septic is not an inspection that's going to be adequate to tell, in my, in my opinion, uh, whether the septic is going to uh, be you know, up, up to the level of performance that you need when you move in. So hire your independent inspector uh, that represents you as a buyer, and that's gonna cost additional money. Let's go to the fifth thing. If you're purchasing a home with a well, you need a well inspection. A well inspection is when you hire an individual well specialist to inspect the functioning of the well. That is different from getting, uh, you know, water tests, okay? So we have a lot of buyers that are like, why do I have to pay for a well inspection? We got the water test, the water's fine, and also the county test, it, and the county says it's fine. We're talking about hire a well inspector to come in, make sure the pump is working correctly, make sure the lines are good, make sure that that well house is, is fine and that you know your well is functioning correctly. Um, get a separate well inspection in addition to testing the water, okay? that costs additional money. So if you're buying a home with a septic and a well, you're going to need three types of uh, inspections on that property minimum. Well inspection, septic inspection, septic scope inspection, and home inspection, okay? And there may be additional inspections on top of it, you know, depending on your property. If you're buying a home on a, that has a, you know, a clear for something nearby, you might want a geotech inspection. So really, some of these inspections, there's a, there's a, a under the umbrella of inspection, there's a bunch of things underneath and it varies property to property. We're not going to get into all those because we'll be here all day. Yes. All right. Fifth thing, closing costs. Closing costs vary by, by lender. They tend to be two and a half to three percent. Um, you're going to need closing costs, especially in this market. Uh, you know, there's still a little bit of the myth rolling around that you can roll closing costs into the, your loan and have the seller pay them. Man, in this market, and it's a miracle if you get the seller to pay your closing costs. Okay, I would not plan on it. All right, just start saving your money and have the, your, your closing costs set aside. All right, seventh thing and the final thing, and, and you know, people would just feel like wet dry by the end of the process. They're like, okay, I just paid for my down payment. Earnest money deposit is in escrow, so I'm not, that cash is gone right now. Uh, home inspection, septic or sewer scope, well inspection, closing costs. And the seventh thing is your moving expenses. <laughs> Make sure you set aside some cash for your moving expenses. All right? Are you hiring a truck? Who's helping you move? Are you paying somebody to actually move it for you? Are friends helping you? You're going to have to buy a pizza and beer at a minimum. I mean, or you're going to lose some friends. Let's just get real here because, man, only true friends show up to help you move. So have have some money and some cash set aside for your moving expenses. So those are the seven uh, costs you should expect as a home buyer when making a home purchase. Uh, first one is down payment. Second one is earnest money deposit. Third one is home inspection. Fourth one is septic and sewer scope. Fifth one is your well inspection. Sixth one is closing costs. And the seventh is your moving expenses. All right, if you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends, family, 
Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I am Stephanie Dupuy with Dupuy Team at Keller Williams West Sound, and we will see you right here next week.